In this video, we're going to take a look at what these massive wildfires in Texas and Oklahoma are going to mean to food production or food supply in the coming months and years. We're also going to assess whether Putin's recent nuclear threats should be taken seriously in the next inevitable phase of the war in Ukraine directly on Russian soil, as there have been some new developments on this front. I'm also going to let you know the latest on the conflict in Israel, and I'll also announce this week's giveaway in the winter for last week. So definitely stick around for that. Now, before we dive into this video, <clears throat> let me restate what I'll emphasize weekly when we do these news segments. I do these videos not to instill fear or anxiety in our community, but instead, these videos are designed to serve as a guide for preparedness. These videos aim to help you understand what's coming on the horizon so you can shape how and what you prepare for. We try to purposefully focus on stories that will impact this community in one way or another. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, focus on practical steps. We have many DIY and how-to videos that are available in our library and that's gonna keep you plenty busy and they'll help you prepare. For newcomers, there are plenty of starter videos on this channel to get you started preparing what you need to survive an uncertain future. And I'll list them all out in the description and comment section below. Now remember, Global conflicts persist, and their impact on people, economies, and supply chains is undeniable. What you can do today is secure your essentials, whether that's food, water, shelter, and medical supplies. And when infrastructure falters, your preparedness will sustain you. And while we can't prevent global challenges, we can fortify our immediate surroundings. The best time to prepare was yesterday, and the next best time to prepare is today. Additionally, we are hiring here at City Prepping, and I'll put a link to the job description below if you're interested in joining our team. All right, with that said, let's jump into the news you need to know. Wildfires. Wildfires are wreaking havoc across the Texas panhandle and parts of Oklahoma, causing significant damage and claiming at least one life. Now, thousands of people are stranded amid thick smoke and falling ash. And these fires have spread rapidly, covering more than 1,700 square miles at the time of recording this video at nearly 6 p.m. PST on 229-24. And that's 1 million acres in just four days. And to put that in perspective, that's larger than the state of Rhode Island, all of Yosemite National Park, or the Grand Canyon National Park. And at the time of recording this video, it is the largest fire in Texas history and the second largest in the United States history. That may become the biggest if this continues to persist. Now, the fires are moving quickly. They're fueled by dry conditions, strong winds, and high temperatures. And containing them has been challenging. However, there's some hope on the horizon. Rain is expected soon. The weather forecast suggests improvements over the next few days with cooler temperatures and reduced wind. Now, snow may even fall in some areas, which could help extinguish the flames. Now, the Pantex plant in the Texas Panhandle, which is the only nuclear weapons assembly and disassembly facility in the United States, temporarily evacuated non-essential personnel. Now, if the Texas Panhandle region were a state on its own, it would rank among the top beef producing areas in the country. The region is a top producer of fed beef, silage, hay, soybeans, cotton, sorghum, dairy, corn, and wheat. And fed beef and dairy need grass to graze on, so these fires will cause ranchers to downsize their herds this year. Now, as a result, that's gonna mean that we're gonna get our beef from other areas by importing it from countries that we have strained relations with or pay much higher prices for a reduced supply. The same is gonna be true for milk. Now, while obviously a tragedy for all those in the region and the blow to agriculture production, why are we covering this in this video? This fire is larger than the last largest fire in Texas history, less than two decades ago. Large fires before that were a third the size of these mega fires. And there's no denying that severe wildfires are increasing in severity, extent, and frequency. And as we've covered quite a bit in the earlier videos, some regions are experiencing long periods of drought while others are inundated with rain. We're also noticing that though the patterns last longer, they cycle between extremes with greater speed. Now these Texas fires were preceded by an unseasonable period of wintertime warmth accompanied by just a quarter inch of the average five inches of precipitation from earlier years. That makes for perfect conditions for fires to thrive and even become the norm. Millions of Americans are facing extreme weather whiplash this week, notably in cities including Chicago and Dallas, which were forecast to swing from record highs to wintry lows. And we're seeing this throughout the world, from the fires in Canada, Greece, and Italy last year, to name just a few notable ones. The world also experienced dramatic flooding in Hong Kong, dual typhoons slamming into Asia, and catastrophic torrential rain in Libya, Greece, Turkey, and Bulgaria. And everywhere you look, 
Records are being broken with greater frequency, and it's not forecasted to prove anytime soon. In fact, the most recent data on global sea temperatures show that we are well above any previous readings taken in the last 42 years. We're so far above even last year's record-breaking temperatures that the lines on the chart don't even touch. And the lingering question is whether these trends will reverse or continue into extreme uncharted territories. And there's really no statistical data that indicates a reversal. And recent studies of the Twice Glacier in West Antarctica show that the warming trend began in 1940s, accelerated in the 1970s, and persists today. Now, you may ask, why am I bringing this up? Well, the glacier plays a crucial role in stabilizing the West Antarctic ice sheet that's akin to a cork holding back vast ice masses. If this ice sheet collapses, it could destabilize the land-based ice sheet, and that's the ice that raises sea levels. And while we're not there yet, the global landscape would drastically change if such a collapse occurs. And look, I don't have a crystal ball, and I'm not going to get into arguments in the comments section regarding causes or the global solutions that might be possible. I don't need to do any of those things to read the writing on the wall, and you should as well. Modern agriculture and food production, whether rice patties in China, lettuce in California, olive trees in Italy or Greece, or crabs off the Bering Strait, they rely on somewhat stable temperature ranges and consistent weather patterns. Fall springs, too much or too little rain, too hot or too cold temperatures, and the rapid cycles between weather patterns can decimate crops, cause insect populations to explode, they can kill off beneficial pollinators, they can increase plant rust and molds, and so much more. So let's try to put this in the layman's terms. Having consistent and stable weather patterns and temperature ranges is kind of like riding in a car with shocks. The bumps in the road, high roads of rocks, or lows of potholes, they can be absorbed. And what we're seeing year after year, however, is increased instability. And it's kind of like riding in a car with no shock absorbers at all. Every bump and pothole strains the system and can cause further stress fractures and rattles and jolt every person on board. So, of course, the question becomes, well, what does that mean to me personally? Well, it means that what you eat over the next decade is going to change dramatically because of crop failures and price increases. It means, most importantly, that you should be growing at least something of what you eat to offset shortages and increased prices. That's your solution to these extreme weather oscillations in the future. That may mean growing indoors, building a grow house outside to protect your plants from extreme weather shifts, or converting part of your lawn to a garden and planting hardier varieties of plants that are capable of withstanding the shocks and wild oscillations of the unpredictable weather of the future. I would encourage you to check out our current video library on gardening, which I'll link to below. We also have some new videos in production on growing indoors and building a grow shed. And both of these video series will give you some great ideas, so you're definitely going to want to stick around to watch for those. So what do you think? Are there any solutions you're plugging in right now to deal with these rising food prices? Let us know in the comments section as a community would benefit from your insight. Russia. Another week's news segment, and there's yet another set of stories of process about Russia's threat to the world. Russian President Vladimir Putin warned of a significant risk of nuclear war if Western countries sent troops to Ukraine in his recent annual address to the nation, just two weeks ahead of the presidential election. Now, Putin emphasized the consequences for potential interveners, highlighting Russia's nuclear capabilities and their potential to target adversaries' territories. Now, his warning was among his most explicit concerning the dangers of direct confrontation between NATO and Russia. This warning follows French President Emmanuel Macron's proposal for European NATO members to send ground troops to Ukraine, which the United States, Germany, and the United Kingdom, and others immediately and firmly rejected. Now, Putin, amidst strained relations with the West over Ukraine, reminded Western leaders of historical invaders' failures in Russia, expressed willingness for dialogue with the U.S. on strategic stability. He praised Russian troops in Ukraine as brave warriors and acknowledged concerns over the integrity of Russia's upcoming presidential election, marked by key opposition figures being jailed, exiled, or killed, including Alexei Navalny, whose burial was scheduled for Friday at the time we'll release this video. So let's be honest here for a moment. The nuclear annihilation threats are often the standard rhetoric of despots, whether they are in Russia, Iran, or North Korea. And I don't give as much credence to the words as I do to the tests or the instability of the nuclear-capable country. And regarding nuclear tests, Russia has had fewer successes and failures as of late. Russia previously conducted 13 known tests between 2017 and 2019, all of which were unsuccessful. But still, it only takes one rogue decision or one detonation to entirely and irrevocably alter the world. 
These threats, at least right now, are unrealistic. Europe will not put troops on the ground in Ukraine in any meaningful way when it can wage a war simply by supplying weapons and supply efforts are ramping up. The European Union ratified a resolution to call for absolutely no self-imposed restriction on military assistance to Ukraine, reaffirming the need to provide the country with whatever is needed to regain complete control over its internationally recognized territory. Now, this unbinds the hands of many countries on what military assistance they can provide Ukraine. For example, Finland, they refuse to set any limits on the use of weapons sent to Ukraine. Ukraine is free to use military aid supplied by Finland however sees fit, say the Finnish officials. Now, the future commander of the Estonian Defense Forces indicated that Ukraine must be able to take the war to Russia with weapons provided by Western countries. And though many countries like the United States have provided long-range capable missile systems, they have thus far forbade Ukraine from striking targets on Russian soil. Now, that order of restraint, however, is beginning to fade. And as this war approaches its second year and its iteration, and really its 10th year if you go back to Russia's first incursion and annexation in 2014, it's becoming increasingly more apparent to all involved that the only way to stop it is to allow Ukraine to strike further and further onto Russian soil. And when the war is at the front door of the Muscovites, it's likely their growing dissent and disapproval of Putin could escalate to a meaningful enough level to really result in regime change and in the conflict in Ukraine. Conflicts in Central Africa fomented by Russian paramilitary groups and correct the global commerce and supply chain problems that increase every year. Now look, in addition to this new phase of the conflict and not putting too much credence into Putin's nuclear threats, there's more evidence that Putin's once secret but now exposed plan to unleash a cyber attack on the West by late spring may be more reality than fiction. Now, we previously reported on this in the earlier news segments, but last week's hacking of U.S. pharmacies used Black Cat ransomware. And that's the same ransomware believed to have been created by the Dark Side hacker group, which has proven to be out of Russia. And as you may remember, that cyber gang infamously ransomed the Colonial Pipeline, snarling up oil flow on the East Coast. Now, the pharmacy attack may have been less about shutting down the systems and more about gaining increased levels of access to even more critical components of our health infrastructure system. Now, if you connect the dots, it may be why the FBI just warned the U.S. hospitals that they may soon be hit with the same ransomware. In the last three months, almost 70 organizations, most of which were hospitals and healthcare firms, they've had their data leak on the dark web. And so far, the FBI, CISA, and HHA are staying one step ahead, but it's unknown how many back doors have been open in these critical systems or just how many hackers are waiting for orders from higher up to launch their attacks. So here's the thing. I would advise you to take these warnings seriously and take appropriate action. If you have healthcare accounts that you access online in any way, I would encourage you to go in and at least change your passwords. Don't respond to anyone reaching out to you from these organizations. And if you have questions about a proactive reach out to you from them, look up the contact information and find out if it's a legitimate or a phishing scam. After all, when was the last time any doctor's office proactively contacted you? Now look, all kidding aside though, print any critical medical records you may need in the future and push for fulfillment of vital prescriptions for a more extended period of time. Now finally, if you haven't already downloaded our free guide on protecting yourself from cyber attacks, I would encourage you to do so. You're gonna find several ways to prep against hackers and cyber attacks in that document. And these simple actions will insulate you somewhat should the healthcare tech infrastructure fail for a while. Giveaway. For this week, we're gonna give away a four pack LED road flare emergency light kit. Now due to recent changes on YouTube, user emails are no longer visible on the about page. And as a result, we've shifted our winner selection process in-house to protect your privacy. To participate in the giveaway, all you have to do is simply comment on the video, give it a thumbs up, and then complete the giveaway form linked in the comment section below. Now rest assured, this information is stored securely in our city prepping email newsletter uh, system. And what we'll do is we'll choose a winner from the comments using a random selection tool, and we'll reach out to you via a submitted form. So congratulations to last week's winner, Lynn Cottrell. We'll contact you shortly to arrange delivery of the Mossy Oak 19-in-1 stainless steel multi-tool that you won. Israel. Finally, in this news segment, things are worse in Gaza in the whole Middle East conflict, but they're not so bad that it's hard to assess if we're getting deeper into the conflict or if it's just continuing with its high level of brutality. There was a fear that Israel had launched new assaults in northern Gaza, but that is now established to have been warning shots fired as people rush humanitarian aid convoys. And it's estimated that 30,000 people have died in Gaza since the conflict began. 
That's 1.3% of the 2.3 million population. And the IDF estimates that 10,000 of those were terrorists, but it's also estimated that 20,000 were women and children. We will continue to monitor this as much as possible, but look, I'll be honest, I don't see a speedy resolution on the horizon. Iran still has extensive regional military groups in the surrounding area, which remains an active fire in an open powder keg. And Israel firmly believes in what it is doing and isn't likely to respond to world pressure to pump the brakes on the conflict until they feel they've obtained their objective, which is the annihilation of Hamas. Now, the takeaway here for the prepper is that the global conflicts will continue in the foreseeable future. People, economies, and supply chains, they're going to suffer as they stretch on. Immigration will continue to increase, further strain the infrastructure of non-conflict zone countries. And it's a world problem that we've all faced, and I'm not sure that there's a simple collective world solution. I do know that you can do things today to insulate yourself, whether the conflict is over there or in the neighborhood next to you. Now, above everything else, I would encourage you to get your food, your water, your shelter, and your medical preps in order. And when the infrastructure, supply chain, or food supply collapses or falters, you will have what you need to get through to hopefully better days. And as I often say on this channel, we can't by ourselves stop a wildfire. The irrational actions of despots around the world, attacks on ships in the Red Sea, crazy weather fluctuations, or hacker groups hell-bent on seizing control of our vital infrastructure. But what we can do is prep our immediate surroundings to insulate us from when these things inevitably occur. The best time to prepare was yesterday, and the next best time to prepare is today. Personally, uh, what I've been doing, and I've been sharing this over the last several weeks, and I talked about this a lot in January and part of February, is focusing on my health. We did a whole video series, and I would again encourage you to go check it out, our physical fitness video series. We have a whole download. We spend a lot of time and energy on that. I'm seeing a lot of great results of just implementing basic dieting, working out, and just watching what I'm eating. I've cut alcohol out of my diet, which I've announced a few times on the channel. And I am down as of last weekend, eight pounds. I started at 178 on January 15th. As of last week, I was down to 169. My goal is to get down to about 162, 163. Why am I doing this? Um, it, it comes down to a simple, well, several things. One, I care for my health. And as a prepper, and I'll say this over and over, if we really believe that the future has problems on the horizon, as we always discuss in this community, I know of no better prep than my health. Sure, I can build an inventory uh, of food, of water, of bullets and band-aids, all those things, the staple items that we always talk about in this community. But what I cannot build is I can't build back from health issues. I can to a degree, but I would rather be proactive and get ahead to take care of my health to make sure that it's good now so that I don't let it decay and fall into a situation where I start having a lot of complications. I'm only saying that, not to guilt or shame, but to point out that I am trying to set an example is what I'm trying to say. I've watched a lot of videos on channels over the years that they'll talk about physical fitness being important within the preparedness community. And sometimes I'll watch individuals that are morbidly obese. And again, not to point fingers or shame anybody, I too was on borderline uh, obesity about six months ago. I was pushing up to 28%. When I get around 29, 30% for my age and my height, that falls into obesity. And again, I looked at myself in the mirror and I realized I've got a problem. I've allowed myself to slip. I've eaten in a certain way and I've now chosen to take that as a priority. And in the last five, six weeks, I've seen traumatic results. And what I'll do, and I've been doing, is I've taken pictures every day, for, or rather every Saturday for the last five weeks. And when I hit around 80, 90 days, when I hit my goal, I'll share the timeline and I'll show the photos. I'll be honest, it's a little, uh, it's a little embarrassing when I look at some of the original photos. When I first took them, I was like, holy cow, I'm, I'm out of shape. But I'm very happy to see the progress. And I'm only saying this because I just want to lead by example, is what I'm trying to say. Again, I don't want to just talk about it, but I want to show you. Uh, the next thing I've been working on, I shared the sun last week, is getting back into firearms, getting to the range, getting more range time, becoming proficient and comfortable with my firearm. And again, that's something that I haven't really covered too much on this channel because YouTube tends to penalize firearms channels, or at least those that introduce it on their channel. So I've kind of had some mixed views on that, and I've considered even starting up a separate channel to do that. Um, and lastly, for me and probably many of you watching this, is uh, getting back into gardening, getting my garden ready. I'll be cleaning out my garden beds, I didn't really grow much over the last few months. And they've kind of fallen into uh, a state of, uh, well, they got a lot of weeds, I'll put it that way. There's weeds everywhere. We had a lot of rain and now re uh, weeds are popping up. So I'll be going through and cleaning those out, 
getting the garden beds ready. And uh, again, there's a lot of things I feel I need to do, but I'm encouraged because again, I am capable of doing these things and my encouragement to you is the same. Take the time that you have now, take advantage of it. And again, we can sit around and moan and complain about all the problems of the world, but we can get up and take action. And I will always say this on this channel, I don't wanna be someone that just laments the condition of the world to complain about the issues happening. I wanna lead by example and I wanna provide solutions. And I hope you are taking steps to practically do things. Again, you are empowered as a prepper to do whatever you need to do. Don't let the fear hold you back. And if you find yourself getting caught up in fear, check it, take action. Let me just end with an encouraging note as I always try to do in these videos. As I just stated, you're not a victim in all this. All of these situations that are playing out, there's a lot that's happening. And look, uh, as I've stated before, I'm 48 years old and I don't feel that old. I've been feeling better lately as I've been working out. And uh, you know, in my short life, I consider it short, uh, you know, as I look around the world, I mean, like you, I see a lot of things that are just much different from what I was raised on. The world is changing. And I'm not saying that as I'm complaining or things are bad, but I do realize apart from just a change, I can see like you instability on the horizon. And this is a conversation I've had with a lot of people that are non-preppers, friends, families. It's like this, and I, I might've used this example before, but imagine if there's an edge where we fall off a cliff, so to speak. Just follow with this uh, example I'm using here. In the past, issues seem to be far and distant away from this edge, but we've watched incrementally over the last several years as these issues between these world war, uh, rather wars that are popping up and seemingly uh, feel like they're about to, well, turn into World War III, it almost at times, you know, it feels like, but these issues, these, uh, you know, these threats that we see, whether the climate issues that we've talked about, whether these uh, despots, these leaders around the world that are trying to uh, you know, encroach on other nations and their boundaries, whether we're seeing inflation. I mean, you could go on and on and on, but we're seeing these issues creep up to the edge and they've gone from being over there to now being over here. And it's right up on that edge where if something tips or goes a wrong way, you probably heard the term before a black swan event, we could see some major tipping point. And again, if we're all being honest, yeah, there's been moments like that in history. This is not unique. It's just, at least in my lifetime, they felt over there, they felt distant, but now they feel like they've moved up to the edge. And that's probably the best way I can explain what we're all seeing. I can't predict what's gonna come next. In a perfect world, maybe these solutions get resolved and we go back to a state of peace and you know, everybody's happy. I'd like to believe that. And I'm holding out for it, but in the meantime, I'm taking steps, being proactive, getting my affairs in order and helping my family prepare for an uncertain future. And I would encourage you to do the same. We're always gonna provide solutions on this channel. And again, uh, today I'm releasing the video on Friday. We typically try to get a how-to video out in the middle of the week. We got behind, we're gonna release it this weekend. Um, it was just, it took more time than we thought. We ran into a few issues, but we're getting, you know, the goal is to get a solid how-to video out for you every week. So all that to say, stay encouraged, continue to prepare, and as always, stay safe out there.